what we're going to be going over here is denominator level capacity. And really what we're looking at here is how we allocate our fixed overhead costs amongst the products that we're manufacturing. And this is based on a manufacturing operation here. So what they it refer to this denominator levels here, and you have different choices here based on how you allocate your fixed overhead costs. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at what we're talking about here. Okay, say you've got some fixed overhead here. Whatever you've determined for your manufacturing operations, looking at a particular plant here, you have some fixed overhead costs, and you're going to have to allocate those costs amongst the uh, production or the, the products that you're manufacturing in that plant. So what you're going to do here, you're going to take and determine your total fixed costs. It could be you would start out with some budgeted amount here. And then you would uh, uh, have to determine, uh, again, a budgeted amount of your uh, total direct labor hours. And I'm using the total direct labor hours as our allocation base. But you'd have to have some allocation base here to determine that your fixed overhead here. So you take your total fixed overhead costs, looking at it in terms of a budgeted amount, and then you take your total direct labors here that you budgeted for a particular period here. So. The total costs here divided by your alloc total number of your allocation base here, in this case the direct labor hours, is going to give you some fixed overhead rate. And we were looking here at the budgeted fixed overhead rate. And then uh, as you uh, progress through the year here, uh, at the end of the year you're going to actually have some actual fixed overhead rates. And that would be your total actual fixed cost divided by your total actual direct labor hours Again, direct labor hours is our allocation base. Okay, so what we're talking about with these denominator hours here, those, the capacity uh, that we use here for our denominator hours, that is, uh, in this case, it's our allocation base or it's the direct labor hours here. It's the denominator hours because it's the denominator here of our equation here to determine the fixed overhead rate that we're going to be applying to our product here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at We really have four different alternatives here when you're uh, trying to select the fixed overhead or allocate your fixed overhead and how you'd allocate it amongst the products here. So you either have your th theoretical amount, practical amount, normal amount, or planned or master budgeted amount here. So what we're talking about in this example, let's just say we are total fixed overhead here that we're looking at for our plant operation is $1 million. So what you're going to do here, uh, you start out with your theoretical amount. In this case, we're saying at uh, theor in theory here, we can produce, based on our allocation base here, direct labor hours, we can produce at 110,000 direct labor hours here. So you divide that into your total fixed cost that you have here, $1 million, and you're going to come up with a fixed overhead rate here of $9 per hour. Per direct labor hour, $9 is going to be assigned to your fixed overhead cost. For every direct labor hour you're producing, the factory is producing. And this theoretical amount, this is where we start with the upper limit here. Now the next uh, uh, next amount that we'd be looking at here for our capacity or our denominator hours here would be what they call the practical amount here. So in this case, let's say it's 100,000 direct labor hours and, and we can produce 100 thousand direct labor hours based on our practical capacity level here. Again, divide that into your total fixed overhead cost of a million dollars. You're going to come up with ten dollars here per hour that you're going to be assigning your fixed overhead cost based on each direct labor hour that's produced. Okay, so you see what's going on here. You from theoretically we're only assigning nine dollars here per hour for our, our fixed overhead costs and practically we're going up to ten dollars per hour so it's increasing here. Now this is the other case. This is the third alternative we have. That would be our normal capacity here. Again, $1 million in fixed cost. In this, in our normal capacity, we're saying we only can produce 90,000 direct labor hours. The plant can only put out 90,000 direct labor hours. So that is going to give you a uh, fixed overhead rate of $11 per hour. And then we get down to our last alternative here, and that's our planned capacity amount. And that's really the master budgeted amount. In this case, let's just say here we're sitting at, one, again, fixed cost of a million dollars here, and we're saying, based on our planned capacity, we can only produce here at 80,000 direct labor hours. So that is going to give you an uh, overhead rate here, a fixed overhead rate of $12 per hour. 
So you see here, you really have four different capacities that you have to look at based on those denominator hours. You're going to come up with some theoretical amount you have to determine, and that's going to be your upper limit. That's the maximum in this case that we can produce, and our allocation base is based on direct labor hours. Then their practical amount, that's the next amount here, uh, and that was 100,000 hours here. Normal amount was the third alternative over here, here only 90,000 hours. And then the fourth alternative was the planned amount here of 80,000 hours. So you start with some upper limit here, and then you work your way down to what you've, your planned amount that you're going to be uh, looking at for the year here. And upper limit is going to produce uh, less allocation here uh, for your fixed overhead rate based on our allocation base here, direct labor hours, whereas the planned amount here is going to be the greatest amount here that you're going to be uh, allocating to your uh, your fixed overhead costs to your products. Okay, so really what we've done, we've got these different capacity levels and we divide them up here between what the plant can supply here, that's the available capacity and that would be based on either your theoretical amount or your practical amount here. And then you have uh, your, cap based on capacity utilization, that would be for the demand for the output, either the normal amount here or the planned amount. And the other thing that you have to work with when we did these division, take our fixed cost here divided by the denominator hours here, the direct labor hours here, you come up with some rate. So you're going to have a different denominator that you use here. Uh, the, these, DH, these DHs I'm showing here, those represent our different denominators in our uh, allocation here. And then these BFs that I show here in different colors, those are the uh, in this case, the budgeted fixed rates that you have here. So uh, you're going to have to work with whatever you have here. When you make a selection, you're going to have to live with that selection here for allocating your fixed overhead here. So you're going to start with uh, your upper limit here. So that's going to give you, in this case, 110,000 denominator hours. And then your fixed rate here, in this case, it would be $9 per hour. So you can have those four different choices here that you have to work with. Okay, but nonetheless, those capacity levels were uh, really broken down between two different categories here. What's your available capacity here would be the theoretical amount and your practical amount. And the demand for the output here would be based for either the normal or the planned amount here. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, looking at those different four different capacity levels or denominator hours that you can choose here to select the overhead rate that you're going to be applying to your products going through this particular plant again. Okay, so the next thing we want to go over here is our capacity utilization definitions. Those are the choices that we were talking about here. So first off, for that theoretical capacity, that would be the production that the plant would be putting at at 100% of the time here. That plant would be working uh, at a maximum 100%. No downtime, no uh, uh, scheduling conflicts and that, just 100% uh, capacity. And that's a theoretical amount that you're really not going to achieve here. So then for our practical capacity, this is where we're looking at the maximum level the plant can operate efficiently, efficiently at and allows for unfavorable interruptions such as repair time, wait time, and it does provide for efficient operations, but it's, a, it's less than 100% that we have here for a theoretical capacity. And uh, one thing we get, this is one thing you have to be looking at here when you're talking about these denominator hours and this capacity utilization is the production volume variance here. And we'll just go through that briefly in a graph form here. But practical capacity is going to give you a relatively large production volume variance. And then your third choice here was that normal capacity. This would be less than 100% of the practical capacity here, but it will satisfy your customer demands over a long-term span. Say you, your normal capacity, you uh, uh, plan for two to three years here. That you can cover or meet your demands here for two to three years here. And that would include any seasonal, cyclical, or trend factors. And what you're going to end up with, some years you're going to have a favorable, other years unfavorable production volume variances here but it's going to be uh, moving between favorable and unfavorable var production volume variances. And then we got our fourth choice here where that would be our planned or master budgeted capacity. 
And that's what you, you ant anticipated level of capacity utilization here for the next year or the planning period here of the master budget. So it's based on what you're planning to produce here for within the next year here, really. It's really the short term uh, amount that you're going to be uh, producing here. And that's that, again, the planned or master budgeted capacity. Now, that results in a product cost that is neither consistent nor accurate when productivity activity activity differs between periods here so it's really the short-term view that you're looking at here so if you go out here two or three years in advance and you may have a completely different capacities here so this planned capacity will not uh, most likely will not meet your uh, more uh, long-range goals that you have or capacity that you have to plan to uh, provide for but it does minimize the production volume variance but given the choice here, uh, plants or production operations should use this practical capacity level here. This is where the plant, that should be their goal. That's what they should be basing their uh, capacity levels on. The maximum level the plant can operate at efficiency, the practical capacity amount. Okay. All right. So let's go down here and let's look at what we're talking about with these uh, uh, production volume variances here. So what I've done here, what you would do here in, in graph form, just to basically understand what's going on here, our allocation base was those direct labor hours here. So you're going to have some direct labor hours that you're going to be producing at here, either a normal amount, a practical amount, or some theoretical amount. So you can see normal amount here is less than a practical, and practical is less than the theoretical amount. This is your direct labor hours that the plant's producing at. And then on your that's along your x-axis here and then along your y-axis this is where you uh, have determine your or you calculate your overhead cost simply taking the hours that you, those direct labor hours that you're using here as your allocation base times some uh, amount that you have here those the direct labor rate that you, or the the uh, of capacity rate here or those the uh, fixed overhead rate here that you calculated here you take those denominator or those hours direct labor hours your allocation base times the uh, fixed overhead rate here and that's going to give you your overhead cost that you're looking at but when you're dealing with this uh, these capacity analysis is it's based on your fixed overhead that you have for the period that's going to say that fixed overhead that you're looking at is going to be remain the same regardless of what capacity level you selected here for allocating your fixed overhead. So you're going to have some fixed overhead times some budgeted rate here times whatever denominator hours you chose here. That's going to give you a fixed constant amount regardless of how many direct labor hours you actually produce during the period here. And just to make understand what's going on, when I talked about uh, those different overhead rates, you'd have those laid out here. So we would have, in this case, we would have had like three different, we're just looking at three different overhead rates. We had that theoretical amount here that we were applying at $9 per hour. So you can see the slope of that line here is less than our practical amount here uh, at $10 per hour for allocating our fixed overhead here. And our norm, or, yeah, our normal amount here was uh, eleven dollars per hour. I'm not showing it here, but it was eleven dollars per hour. Should have had it here in a graph. So the normal amount we're applying the fixed overhead here at a greater amount than the practical, and the practical we're applying our fixed overhead here at a greater amount than the theoretical amount. But these are just relationships here. So you would, when you're looking at your and doing your capacity analysis here, what you want to do, you want to plan such that whatever your fixed overhead is here your total fixed overhead cost you want the uh, planned capacity here or what you're allocating when i talk about allocating at say if you're our, our practical amount here at ten dollars per direct labor hour here you take whatever amount that rate times your direct labor hour here and you want to intersect with your fixed amount here whatever your fixed amount you want that you want to be applying at that uh, amount that you have budgeted here for your fixed rate versus what you're allocating here uh, on a, your allocation base on so many uh, direct labor hours produces such and such an overhead cost. And if you're pro producing below or less than the uh, intersecting point here between your fixed amount and what you've allocated here, then you would have a 
production volume variance. You're not uh, absorbing all the overhead that you have here that you plan for here. And if you're producing more here, if you're actually producing at a greater amount of direct labor hours here than what you your fixed amount here, then you'd have a favorable production volume variance here. Okay, so that's all we're talking about with production volume variances here. So you're going to have to determine, choose the proper level here and to determine exactly how you want, what you think that plant can operate at here. So whatever level you choose, you want them to equal, be equal here. You, what, you've, what you're allocating based on the direct labor hours you're allocating uh, at whatever rate here, you want it to, you want to be producing at whatever fixed overhead cost you have at that per, particular, at particular allocation rate. That's what you're looking at here. All right, so that's what you're looking at when you're having to choose those different denominator hours here. A choice of different hours is going to give you a choice of different allocation rates that you're looking at here. We just look at normal, practical, and theoretical amounts here. All right, so that's pretty much what you're looking at here when you're trying to determine those the denominator hours that you're looking at. All right, and then lastly here, in choosing a capacity level or those denominator hours, first off, things you'd have to consider here. Product costing, usually based on those, the practical capacity that we talked about here. That was really the maximum level that the plant could produce at. Then secondly here, you're gonna have, you have to be concerned with a downward demand spiral. That is, a reduction in demand results in higher unit costs. That is, uh, this fixed overhead here is going to have to be spread over less of a number of units, say. Say, you know, the, the, you're not selling as much product as you uh, planned on, and therefore, whatever denominator hours you chose here, you're going to have to reduce those denominator hours here, and that's going to drive up your uh, overhead rate here, and that's, that's the problem you're looking at here. And then, you're going to have performance evaluation. What it's going to be based on, uh, based on what capacity level here. So when you're uh, looking at your plant operations and all the people operating in that plant, the management and so forth, the uh, their performance evaluation and how you uh, uh, assign those uh, fixed costs here is based on the capacity level is going to really uh, judge their performance or their evaluations. And then for external, external reporting, it's how operating income is affected by the adjustments to the production volume variances at the year end. Whatever, we talked about those production volume variances here. And if you have either under or over, at, under allocated amounts, you're gonna have to increase your, they're gonna have to be spread amongst your different, uh, your inventories and your cost of goods sold and so forth here. So that can affect what your, uh, your costing when you're talking for external reporting, you have to have match your costs with your revenues and that. So whatever your, those production volume variances are gonna have to be adjusted at the year end. And then so, uh, for tax reporting, the IRS requires companies to use the practical capacity level to allocate the budgeted fixed manufacturing costs. And they have to prorate the variances between your different inventory accounts and your cost of goods sold. When I'm talking about those, there's a number of different variances, but we were really talking about this production volume variance. So that's a concern here with the IRS for tax reporting. And then finally here, the difficulties and there's difficulties in forecasting the capacity levels because of economic upturns and downturns, regulatory requirements, all the different engineering studies that you're going to and so forth that you're going to base your uh, these capacity levels on. So you got a number of different uh, concerns here when you're choosing your different capacity levels. You're going to have product costing concerns, uh, your demand downward demand spirals here evaluations, external reporting here for the uh, financial statements, and then tax reporting, and then all those difficulties here in for forecasting the direct, the proper capacity level here. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion here on denominator levels that you have to, uh, choices that you have to make here for uh, allocating your fixed overhead costs.